Okay, the next topic that we need to talk about before moving on to descriptive statistics is linking your research questions to your survey questions. And we've talked about this a little bit, but I just want to help you with this process a little, little more, especially where we don't have a whole lot of time. The process basically is to select a topic that interests you. It is important that it is interesting to you, otherwise you're not going to enjoy this project at all. Um, write a statement of the problem or the issue. So no matter what topic you pick, there's some kind of issue associated with it or problem that needs to be solved. You want to be able to construct a statement. And then from there, you'll develop research questions. And remember that research questions are very broad in nature. They don't ask questions directly of a person, like how do you or what do you. They Rather, they're more broad so they can be applied to the population that you're interested in studying. And then you would work on creating a survey that will allow you to collect the data that you have to have in order to answer the questions you came up with. The uh, fifth part of the process is to pilot test the survey once you make it. Nobody can make a perfect survey, not even the most experienced researcher. Everybody has to pilot test. And anybody can do your pilot testing. You can have your spouse, you can have um, your friends, you can have your neighbors, your colleagues, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, whatever. Just somebody else besides you needs to look at the survey, preferably a few people looking at it take the survey as though they're a participant and then give you feedback so that you can make revisions. Once that's happened, um, you can finalize the survey. And then of course, you're ready to collect your data. Trying to think of a topic usually is one of the toughest parts of the project for students. Um, it literally can be anything. It doesn't have to be something that's, you know, really scientific or even related to FCS. Um, it just has to be something that interests you, that you think that you could collect data on, that you might enjoy. Uh, I know most of you are not going to do a thesis, not for this particular cohort, so that probably won't work. Um, but you're probably thinking about doing an independent study, and maybe you could start a statistics project along those lines just to get you get some of your data in literature out of the way for that. Um, remember this has to be a relatively small project so you don't want to get in over your head and you also need to look at the existing literature. You do have to have some peer-reviewed research articles for this project and so looking at pulling up some articles, doing a, a subject search in EBSCOhost, that's a good place to start to kind of get an idea of what's out there. There's always a reason to study various topics. So first, when you're trying to come up with a statement of a problem or issue, think about who's affected by the topic. That's a good place to start. Um, think about how they're affected by the topic. Why should this topic be studied? Why is it important? Or what I call the so what factor. And then how can the data that you collect improve the lives of individuals, families, and or communities in some way. Obviously, this will be some small way, but any information, any research that's conducted can be applied to help people. And again, I remind you, as you see all in bold, all in caps at the bottom, to look at the literature. Once you have come up with a topic, a good idea is to then think about some questions that you have. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be your final questions. You just want to get your thought process on paper. And it really is a good idea to just grab some paper and a pencil and a pen um, and just really put down what's going on in your head. You can always revise the questions later. You just need to get something down on paper to start with. It's much easier to edit and revise than it is to create. So trust me on that. Um, give some consideration to your sample. Remember that the sample is going to be comprised of the people that will give you the responses that you plan on analyzing. 
So it has to be a sample that is relatively easy to tap into. You don't want to say, study um, adults living in Africa that are from the United States that um, have only daughters and their family and how women's issues affect that family. That would be a really difficult sample to get. And most likely you wouldn't be able to get 25 of them within the short time period that we have. So think about what's easiest. Um, and I know that I'm not trying to encourage you to be lazy. I'm just trying to encourage you to be realistic. We've got five weeks left of class and it's just, it has to be something that you can do. It has to be feasible. Give consideration to whether your questions can be answered within your sample. Um, within your time frame, which is a very short turnaround time, and with the resources that you have. Uh, we're going to be doing surveys. You can do them online or you can do them in paper, whichever is more convenient for you. Um, think about the fact that if you were going to do it on paper, you know, how much copies would cost? Do you have access to copying or printing? Um, and then maybe you want to consider doing it online instead. Or you may be surveying a population or a sample that won't have access to the computer, but you have access to them. Then in that case, it would be easier to use paper. But just think, so think about both aspects, the topic you're interested in, as well as the sample. We've talked about this a little bit before, but I'll mention it again. The difference between research questions and survey questions Research questions pose potential relationships, causality, or group differences in a question format. And I put broad in parentheses. Survey questions ask specific questions in order to gather the data that you need to test the research questions. So they are very specific and they do ask, how do you, have you ever, how do you feel on a scale from one to 10, can you rate so they're, they're directed to the individual, and that really is the easiest way to tell the difference between the two. When you go to create a survey, remember it does not have to be perfect because you're gonna get feedback. You're gonna pilot test, so you'll be able to edit. And you have to remember that the questions you create need to allow you to answer the research questions that you have. So, Again, I go back to the example of reading, being read to as a child causes adults to enjoy reading when they're in adulthood. You must have questions on the survey that ask about being read to as a child, as well as questions that tap into whether or not somebody enjoys reading as an adult. If you don't have those, you can't answer that question. So just try to think, how am I going to make sure I get this information and make sure that you have enough questions that do that? One thing that I would um, encourage you to think about is the fact that you have to have 10 questions in addition to your demographic information. So the demographic is considered separate and that includes things like age, gender, ethnicity, um, relationship status, education, background, whatever. This is information that you use to describe the sample. It is not part of the 10 questions that you're required to come up with for the survey. And you may feel like, well, I can write one question and that answers my research question when I get the answer to that. But that's not going to be sufficient. And good researchers try to come up with several ways of getting at the same information so that they can look at it from different perspectives. So you might not only ask somebody if they enjoy reading, yes or no. You might also ask them to rate it on a scale from one to 10, how much they enjoy it. You might also ask them to select a topic that is the most interesting to them um, and you might also ask them how much they read on a weekly or monthly, yearly basis, whatever the case is. So you're still getting at the same information, but it's from different angles. Hopefully that makes sense to you. 
So one question is not going to be enough. And that's why I'm requiring you to have at least 10 for the three research questions that you have to have. I can't emphasize enough to pilot test. Um, not only does it help identify mistakes, it helps to clarify. Sometimes things seem very clear to you as the author of the survey, but then you give it to somebody else and they're like, I have no idea what you're even asking here. And that's when you know you need to go back to the drawing board and fix that question. It also helps to change the appearance. So it may look like it's straightforward and professional to you, but somebody else gets it and says, I don't understand why these boxes or lines are here and it's confusing. Um, it doesn't matter what they say and they don't have to be experts on survey um, construction. They can just be anybody. They just have to try to take the survey, see if it makes sense to them, see if there are any mistakes, see if it needs clarification, and then any other changes that are going to help you be successful in collecting your data. After you have piloted your survey with at least three people, you're going to make the changes and you're going to note these changes because in your final project you will talk about how you pilot tested your survey. You will indicate some or all of the changes that were suggested to you and then you'll describe how you made those changes. So everything has to be documented. You probably learned that in research methods. It's true here as well. You have to be able to tell somebody exactly what you did. And although it may seem tedious and not necessary, it is actually very necessary. So remember to keep note of the, the changes. You must have a letter or introductory paragraph that says why this data is being collected. You'll want to indicate it's for a graduate level statistics class. Who is collecting it? That's you. And then you want to indicate how the data will be used, which is for a class project. In addition to your email and your name and potentially your phone number, you would also list my information in case they have questions as I am the instructor. Once all that is done, you're ready to collect your data. I realize that this isn't a survey construction class, but the way that you construct your survey affects the kind of data that you can collect and whether or not you can answer your questions. So it, it pays, pays off to start off right and really go through this slowly, methodically, and, and make a good survey because it's going to help you in the long run. Okay, that's all.